cross, reflecting on each station as seen through her eyes then and through her eyes now. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In whom is all salvation, all life and resurrection. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, he deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. A reflection through Mary's eyes. My son, my son stood. My son stood before Pilate as an innocent man, but throughout his life he entered more and more deeply into the condition of sinful flesh. It was not enough that he was born of a human mother like me. He grew up in obscurity in Nazareth, and they always judged him there. They always judged it wasn't right that he was conceived before Joseph and I were married. Even when he began his public ministry, the religious leaders didn't accept him. His reflection of God didn't fit their self-serving picture of God. Finally, his own followers abandoned him. I never imagined he would have to experience solidarity with prisoners, beaten and tortured, but he did. I'll never forget the blood he shed and the pain he experienced at the hands of the Roman guards. Jesus began his journey by becoming one with every powerless person, mocked and made fun of by others. He did nothing that deserved capital punishment or the abuse he was given. His yes, his surrender to God's will, ultimately destroyed the power of sin and death. While he was growing up, I told him many times how I had been graced to say, let it be done to me according to your word. I never could have imagined this would have been the sword that would ultimately pass through my heart to watch my son say yes to God so completely and fully for the salvation of the world. Now that he is condemned to death, Reflect with me on each station of his journey as he enters more and more completely into our humanity and death itself. Let us ask for God's grace to be with him, accompanying him on his journey in order to more fully understand it and be more fully grateful for its gift. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because of your holy cross, 
you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearer is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgression of my people was Christ stricken. My son was forced to carry the cross on which he would be nailed, ridiculed, and executed. We pause here to remember what it represents. For this journey, he takes up the weight of all our crosses, all of our senseless suffering, and the weight of all the sin in the world, past, present, and future. Each step he took cut deeply into his already battered shoulders. I couldn't believe he could manage even a few of the steps he had to take. We can look back now and remember that this is for all of us. Each of us can say it was for me. As we imagine each step he takes, we can pause now to say thank you in our own words, deep in our hearts. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. Christ Jesus, though he was in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on us. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, who is the Lord our God. Surely he has borne our grief and carried all our sorrows. I can hardly express to you what it was like to see my son fall under the weight of that cross. Everything within me wanted to make them stop. This was already too much, but there was nothing I could do except watch him lie on the ground. Of course, I now know that if he was to enter completely into our lives, he would have to surrender to the crushing weight of the burdens so many in this world suffer. All the people of the earth who are overcome by unfair burdens will always know that. Lying there on the ground, Jesus knew and understood their powerlessness. Unable to get up himself, he entered into and forever understands our fatigue and what unfairly defeats us. I understand your sorrow and feeling of guilt at reflecting on my son's way to Calvary. Please just be grateful. My son simply wants us to remember how he loved us then and loves us now. This is all about his mercy and the gift of life we have in him. The fourth station, Jesus meet his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. To what can I liken you? 
To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A sword will pierce your own soul also. And fill your heart with bitter pain. As I pushed and shoved to move through the crowds to be as close to my son as I could, we came to a place in the road where he stopped. He saw me and we looked into each other's eyes. I didn't want him to see my tears or know my pain. But long ago, I had accepted how thoroughly he knew me. The love from my heart poured out in the only embrace I could give him. My lips quietly said the prayer he taught us. Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He nodded ever so slightly, took a deep breath, and moved on up the hill. The sword passing through my heart had blessed his mission and I knew he knew it. Thank him with me that he took up that mission for us. Thank him that he has known the separation and loss every person knows who has lost a loved one. He has understood the heart of every loving mother who grieves at the suffering of her children. Thank him that he has become so completely one with us. The fifth station, the cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. A we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone should come after me, let that one deny self to take up one's own cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoever does not bear one's own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now I reflect with me on what it must have been like for my son to simply not be able to carry the cross any further alone. I was so relieved that he was getting help at that time even though my heart went out to Simon, who was drawn into Jesus's journey. As we look back, we can give thanks that Jesus entered into our life, even in this gesture of help. Jesus came to know that the experience of all of us who must depend on others, who cannot make it alone, even in this final journey, Jesus would not even have the satisfaction of being able to do this on his own. Let us pause for a moment to express to him now whatever it is in our hearts. The sixth station, a woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. We had seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by all, a person of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom people avert their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of all humanity but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stri stripes we are healed. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. I can't describe his face with the blood and the sweat and the bruises and swelling from the beatings. As a mother, I can hardly bear to tell you that there was even spit on his face. It was the face of solidarity with all who have experienced abuse and violence. Then out of the crowd came a woman whose compassion for my son was so great that she pushed past the Roman soldiers and wiped his face with her veil. Oh, how I loved her for that. The look between them touched me deeply. His clean face for a moment revealed the loving face of the son I loved. As he smiled at the woman and continued on the journey, those of us nearby looked at her veil and saw the gift he gave her. There on her veil was a stunning likeness, a true icon of the cost of his sacrifice and the depth of his solidarity with all who suffer. This image is his gift to us forever, to be able to contemplate his likeness, his union with us in our worst rejection and suffering as you remember with me how his face was so covered with the marks of punishment and violence, let us give thanks for his solidarity with us in every aspect of our lives, and especially for his companionship with us in adversity. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. Surely Christ has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. But as for me, I am a worm and no human being. Scorned by all and despised by the people. When my son fell the second time, my heart sank. As he just seemed to lose control and stumble and crumble to the ground. The way he fell to his knees on the hard stones. I could feel the jarring pain through my whole body. Helpless to help him, I again wondered if he could make it. As I look back with you today, I imagine that this fall placed him together with people with disabilities, with people suffering from all kinds of physical diseases that weakened them and with all who are aging and must confront the limits of their bodies. My prayer is that all God's people who know suffering from disabilities like these might know that they can always turn to my son for understanding and comfort. With gratitude in our hearts, we take a few moments to find the words to express our feelings to him. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. A reading from the scriptures. Sorry. <laughs> we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people and among them the women who bewiled him and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Those who sowed with tears will weep with songs of joy. The 
This moving scene filled my mother's heart with even more love for him. As I had seen him comfort so many groups of people during his life, now he comforts this group of women and children in Jerusalem. What a remarkable meeting. They aren't here to condemn him. They try to comfort him as he looks on them with love and compassion. During his ministry, he had come to grieve for Jerusalem. Now my son gives these mothers a special mission. Soon they would understand that the suffering they witnessed so closely was for them. Soon they would witness the suffering of Jerusalem and have their chance to bring compassion and faith to their children and the people of their city. It is good to reflect here with him on the mission each of us has that can be shaped by this encounter with his suffering, death and resurrection for me. Consider for whom he would grieve today, to whose suffering he would ask us to bear witness to, to whose children he would bid us bring compassion and faith today. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. I am the one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. God has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. God has beseeched me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. God has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, God shuts out my prayer. God has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. Christ was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Unlike a sheep that before it shares is mute, so Christ opened not his mouth. I will always remember this final fall, having endured such a beating and having lost so much blood. My son simply collapses. I saw him lie there on the ground and I thought he was dead. His arms spread out in a space in the dirt. Jesus found himself in solidarity with all who fall in any way. Contemplating how the soldiers roughly pulled Jesus up and made him take the last steps to Calvary, take a moment to speak with him expressing your gratitude for his understanding of every weakness or failure you have ever, ever experienced. And pray for all those who are violently abused and suffer brutal treatment at the hands of others. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. The sword passed through my heart again to watch my son so violated in this way. 
they intended to shame him even more by executing him naked. They simply had to strip him of any dignity a human being could have left. I remember looking at this body I had bathed and cared for, now with all his wounds, reopened and bleeding, so exposed for everyone to see. Now I see all the people in the world who are vulnerable and without any defense, all those whose dignity is violated. And I see this act of stripping as placing my son in union with those who suffer. His incarnation was about to be complete. Please pause to express what is in your heart and to give him thanks that all this was done so that you might be free from the power of sin and death. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. When they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him, and with him they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with his transgressors. They pierced my hands and my feet. They stared and gloat over me. Today, as I remember him lying on the cross with his arms outstretched, it is the sound of the hammer hitting the nails that stays with me. I remember pulling the first of many wood splinters from his fingers as a child working in Joseph's shop. Against his precious hands and wrists that touched the, and healed so many, a nail was placed and a hammer pounded the nail through his flesh and into the wood of the cross. The sound, metal against metal, that ring, and the look on his face, the spasm of his whole body, I will never forget. Then the other hand, and finally his feet are nailed to the cross. Spend some time with him now, imagining how they lifted him up on the cross, nailed there, that you might be free. Reflect, too, on how, how you might lift him up in your heart today, not in pain and suffering, but in freely chosen self-giving. The Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from scriptures. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Christ for us became obedient unto death. Even death on a cross. The sword of helplessness split my heart in two as I watched him struggle to breathe, pulling himself up to let air out of his lungs. With incredible courage and compassion, he spoke of mercy and love. There on that cross, he gave me to John and to the spirit-filled church that would be born on Pentecost. Then after he gave himself into God's hands one last time. He took his final breath and died. It is unforgivable to watch life leave the body of someone you love. At the foot of his cross today, 
Listen to my son tell you of his love for you. Speak to him from your heart. The 13th station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping, my soul in turmoil. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt me very bitterly with me. Her tears ran down her cheeks. And she had none to comfort her. We waited what seemed like a long time before we had permission to take his lifeless body off that cross. And it took so long to remove the nails and to finally lower his body to the ground. Someone removed that horrible crown of thorns from his head. They pulled his hair back and wiped his face clean before letting me hold his body one last time. He had been given to me for only a brief moment when he had left home three years ago before I was so proud of him and excited to experience what God would do through him. There at the foot of the cross, my heart torn by grief, yet trusting in God's promise, I asked only to be God's servant for what was ahead. After the ascension, when we would gather in homes for the breaking of bread. I again held his broken body in my hands, now full of consolation that his promise was fulfilled. He would always be with us. Let yourselves join me in receiving this mystery of the death of Jesus being so real and complete. Knowing the rest of the story, join me in speaking with him heart to heart about our gratitude for how he has transformed the power of death. 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the scriptures. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn into the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave. Nor let your Holy One see corruption. No mother should ever have to bury a child. Just a short time before this day, Jesus looked into Lazarus' tomb. He must have known he would be laid in a tomb like that soon. And when he thanked God for hearing this prayer, he must have known that the father who sent him would give him life that would never die. In just a few days, this tomb would be empty and a sign forever of Jesus's triumph over the forces of sin and death for us. As we picture this scene, let us place the image of the empty tomb before our eyes. Whenever you are tempted to stand outside any tomb and grieve, remember this empty tomb and know that through the eyes of faith all tombs are empty today join me in giving him thanks join me in signing ourselves with the sign of his cross and in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen
Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that as by Christ's death, he has recalled us to life. So by his love, he may rise, raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. To Christ our Lord, who loves us and washes us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Recording has stopped. Thank you, everyone. Nope.